round seven, the halfway point of the Suncorp Super Netball season, and the ladder is clear as mud. We kick things off with the State of Origin clash. Matty Turner's done a homework. Gretel Boet has been busy looking after Bobby, but let's just see how it plays out. Well, whatever works, works for both of them, and straight into that Simpson Proud matchup we go. Fawns with the first shot, a little deeper than she'd like, and a great settler for the youngster from Wagga Wagga. Lara Dunkley takes the first centre pass for the Queensland Firebirds. Finds herself against Ali Smith today. Ali Smith getting a little bit more court time for the Swifts. Proud uses her time and finds Hadley. Sets up again. Trying to hold against Bakewell Dora, and that's an interesting clash as well in this one. Absolutely. Ebony Azuro Brown on Fawns. I think there's experience there against so much youth. Ebony Azuro Brown loves the mental game. Sophie Fawns, as we see a slot, that one doesn't look to be too impacted early on. She hasn't, has she, throughout? You know, she came up against Courtney Bruce two weeks ago and and then up against Kate Walsh and now Asuro Brown, obviously, and English Rose at 33 years of age, 15 years her senior in netball. Turnover now. Hold time. Wing attack, just return the ball next time. Here's a small win for the Firebirds, Ebony Azuro Brown. The little the finicky game's already starting to come in. And that's the, that's the little off the ball stuff that you've got to keep your eye on because that's what we love most about this encounter is not necessarily what's happening with the passer into Wallum, what's happening where the play is, it's what's, what's happening off the ball, what's happening behind play. Yeah, no lack of niggle in any of these. And how could there be after you've just been welcomed onto the court by Billy Moore? Doran it was an area of the game last week that the Firebirds were pretty quiet on. The rebounds are just so important. Great flow down the court there, and Wallen picks up her own shot. So, defensive rebound, but no hesitation whatsoever. Boweta just turned and fired it in. Great trust between these two. Makes me feel like they've been playing for a lot longer than six weeks. This time, though, the tip Dunkley cleans up. Dunkley just overcooks that one on the, on the sideline, puts Rebellion under pressure, so Swifts get one back here. 3-2, just under three minutes gone in the opening quarter of round seven. Can you believe we're here already as the ball flies oh, out, the foot on the line from Hadley. I thought Ebony Azuro Brown, she thought for a hot minute there that it came off of her, so lucky that the sideline call had been called by the umpire. That's when you... Oh, oh. dear! Yes, Maybe a few nerves, Will, in this opening quarter. Yeah. EUB to RBD. Didn't quite work. And there's that quick ball movement from the Swifts. It's what they pride themselves on, those little triangles around the outside edge of the circle. Difficult for defenders to defend because it's just oh, so it. fast. Oh, Ebony Azuro Brown comes up with the win. Oh, benefited from a, a pass that was too deep again. And, and you're right, just so much build up to this one, a little bit more intensity in the, in the final 15 minutes as well. Great tip and then good pass to keep it in. Well, that was impressive from Sarah Cloud. She just got her footwork around the body and it's what we saw Mentor do well on Wallum last week. So. We mentioned at pre-game, Cloud just maybe having a look at some of the footage and some of the things that worked on Wallam la last week and, and in previous rounds. Yeah, Wallam had a lowest shooting percentage of, of the season so far last week. 31 of 41. She was forced to take a couple of super shots. But still, as we see the Harvey Norman replay, too deep and Asuro Brown, too much experience not to know where to be for that one. Lau had to work harder to get it back, but Firebirds will be disappointed. Oh, Housby comes up with her first intercept of the game. Firebirds looking to play back, but Housby just had that nice front position. Got a bit of a ping pong match 
on our hands at the moment. The ball just going back and forward. Yeah, the quarter will be won by the team that can settle into their game first. And there is the Harvey Norman replay, and up goes the English Rose, Helen Housby. Wow, Maddie Proud. She's just finding that circle edge so easily. That's the second pass, and she's top of the circle for every little netballer at home. That is prime real estate for a wing attack. Makes it all too easy to get that ball into the shooters. Six feeds in five minutes for Maddie Proud over the top. Just the go-to play for the wetter. The half jump, high hands over the top to Wallum. Well, Maddie Proud, she, we just mentioned her, but she's home alone at the moment. She's just got no defensive pressure on her, whether the Firebirds are setting up that two-on-one on the centre pass. They need to take care of her. As we know, 60% of the workload was done by her last week. They need to shut her down. 57 feeds for 34 assists and 24 centre pass receives as we get our first tactical timeout thanks to HCF. And it's been a scrappy but fast and furious start to this one. And like I said, it's, it's about teams now deciding to settle into the game, forget everything that happened before, forget the history, forget the... Well, forget us talking it up basically the entire time in the half an hour lead up. Let's listen in. Time to settle into things now. Five minutes already gone. The Swifts with a nice three-goal buffer. And Kim Revalian hears the whistle and off we go. Well, Megan Anderson spoke to her Firebirds attackers and said, I like having one over the line on the centre pass and one back, but we need to make sure we've got a second option. Just feels at the moment they're a little bit stagnant there. Sinks it eventually. They move within two. Sharon Finn and White was sticky beaking into the Swiss huddle. Sharon, what did you hear? Well, Coach Bryony Acle was actually pulled Sophie Forms aside just to have a chat to her about getting around and sighting the circle a bit quicker, adjusting to ball side as well. Uh, so, looking forward to seeing whether those instructions we followed out. Maddie Proud, what an intercept from close range. Called her a New South Welsh woman beforehand. She obviously is from Adelaide, as is half the team. But wearing the red and blue and proud to do it. The turnover coming, though. She doesn't like it either, proud, the captain. Oh, Maddie Turner put the burners on. I thought she was going to get hands to that one on Boetta. Already, we just see a few little errors creeping into the game. 59% possession to the Swifts. Oh, Warham lays that one up. 41. Did, you like, did you feel like Danelle and Gretel just have a layup practice after practice every day? Because she looks like she's a natural off the two step. Oh, <laughs> that's good, good, good though, that way. Not if the two steps are out. <laughs> Come on. But have a look at this transition down the court from the New South Wales Swifts. So fast, no opportunity for the Firebirds to find their players. And again, Housby. This is where she's dangerous in that goal attack position. She creates so much space and depth, and Fawns allows that to happen. If the Swifts end up losing this one, Laura, I'd, I'd be interested to, to know where you rate the Swifts in terms of their transition from Wallace as a dominant holding shooter to a moving circle. We, we've 
I don't know whether they might be at the bottom of the ladder and they're the reigning premiers. We don't talk about it as much because we always feel like the Swiss are in with a shot in every game. But if they lose this one, they're two and five. And where do you where do you place them? Well, Matty Proud said this week during the podcast that they don't want to be defined by the loss of Sam Wallace. And I think that's something that the Swifts do so well is they've got a game plan that they can bring anyone into. Yeah, sure, Sam Wallace is a holding player. All of a sudden, they've got Thorns, who's moving. But their game plan, oh, as we just see there, Turner coming up with the win. Their game plan is strong. They And look again, look at this transition. It's hard not to get excited about what we're seeing from the Swiss Beautiful. today. What a passage of play between Thorns and Howes, who taking the step, and they're happy to see it. Here, it all started on the Harvey Norman replay with Matty Turner. And just as I say, they could be two and five. They go four up, and there's the score of the last ten goals, and they've had seven of them. Well, we saw it last year with the Giants. Sophie Dwyer coming on, having that opportunity in that goal attack position because Kira Austin went down with an ACL injury, and all of a sudden at the end of last season, Sophie Dw Dwyer was this incredible young guy that is now finds itself in the Australian Diamond squad. So it gives young players opportunities and that's what I love so much about the likes of the so Sophie Paul and Sophie Dwyer is that they just relish it. They come on with no fear, but Ruby Baker Doran has something to say about that easy ball into the swift shooter. She comes up with a much needed win for the Firebirds. Yeah, all the COVID disruptions and things that happen in the course of a season really setting us up for game time for the next generation of Diamond superstars. Ruby Baker Doran, one of them. I would say, as Ravalian waits and eventually the mix-up between Turner and Clough puts Wallam short again. All by herself here. Harvey Norman replays and just couldn't thread the needle. And Fakewell Doran comes up with it. Well, Three the, goals still. The Swifts have got four intercepts and five games to their name. Five edge just one intercept and two games. So that's suggests that the game plan from the Swifts is to be proactive and get out there and have a crack at the ball. And at the moment, it's paying dividends for them. All right, we're about to move into the power five. There is the hooter. So the super shot in effect. And here comes the ball. Nearly got me right in the face. It's bound to happen at some point. It is. I've got a lot of face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <don't lie>. Exactly. <laughs> You're not denying it, are you? Who has wings and knees? I'm just not yeah. commenting. <laughs> We're sitting too close. I'm still scarred from well, Shamira Sterling jumping over my table. <laughs> yeah, that was outstanding, wasn't it? While I'm from mid range, too long this time. That's three she's missed now, but Roberta picks it up like it is. No thing. And ball heading straight out towards us on the Harvey Norman replay, but we're safe. Well, it's important for the Fibers to stay in touch with the Swifts. Last week against the Magpies, we saw the Magpies put that scoreboard pressure on them. The Fibers felt like they had to take the super shot and they were inaccurate with it. So important for them. And another win from the defensive end from the Fibers. So that... Hard earned. Oh, Spawns gets a hand on one, doesn't come up with it. And again, another from Proud. So they are out hunting, you're right, but that little advantage has evaporated. And the Swifts, well, they shot 35% for their super shots last week. They shot 17 super shots as a turnover happens. Fawn all by herself. And Housby, second chance draw. And finally, they break that little streak and they needed to. Yeah, 320. absolutely, Will. It's erratic at the moment out there on court. High energy. One minute we saw the fiber, a glimpse of the Firebirds coaching staff laughing or having a giggle, and the next minute they were had these desperate looks on their face. So that's just the way the game's swaying at the moment. There's wins and losses. We see another turnover from the Firebirds. Turnovers everywhere. And Hadley, careful of the replay. And then suddenly another turnover and Clow and Wallam clash and Sharon Finn and White, you've been watching that matchup. 
was so excited watching that match up down there. Sarah Clow's doing a really good job just moving around Wallam's body, confusing the space. And as you probably noticed, a lot of the ball going into Wallam is actually either coming flat or she took one ball in front as well. We're not used to seeing that happen because we're used to seeing the high ball going into Wallam. So Clow's doing a really good job. Absolutely, Sharon. Exactly what we said that. Oh, Greta Bruetta, just a little spill and Turner comes up with the win. It's so true. Clow is doing a fantastic job on the repositioning on Wallam, moving her footwork around to confuse the space. Helen Cowsby coming up with the rebounds. How about the scrappiness of this game? The Queensland Firebirds are on 20 missing net points for the whole team. And the Swifts, 65. Yeah, I've never seen a, a, a smaller Nissan net point haul. Of course, the points are awarded and weighted for different stats for each player, so we can effectively match or compare players in positions across teams. Well, there's been 11 possession changes for the Firebirds. They've got 10 general play turnovers, so a very scrappy start and a replay there from Lara Dunkley. So. Just a few errors creeping into the Firebirds game. Tell you what, it's not detracting from the spectacle as Revalian comes up with one off a tip from Goetta. Ball just stuck in the middle third, and eventually it's Wallen who'll come back with a, a crucial goal to pull him within two. Harvey Norman replay, and the fingertips of Goetta sent it to, and again, back with four. I can't even look at the replays, there's not enough time. I I have to get excited when you watch a player like Kim Revalian retaliate, so to speak, after her performance last week. She was quite... Look at her today. She's just taken an intercept. She was the first one to that loose ball. Have a look at the expression on her face. She's demanding the ball. She is a competitor. She gives me goosebumps because... You're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> you are doing goosebumps. Because she is such an exciting player to watch, and I love that she is so competitive. I love her in this leadership role for the Firebirds. Over the top, and it's going to be 14 apiece with 25 seconds to go if Wallen can sink this one. If Revalian retaliates, is that a revaliate? <laughs> a revaliation? 15 seconds on the clock, and they spill it. They needed that to win the court of the Swifts. Instead, they hand the Firebirds a chance with 10 seconds to go. Revalian looks down at court, has to go back. Will the clock beat them down? Will it be a drawn quarter? With that, it will. One second on the clock. And it's going to be 14 goals apiece, and that has flown past. Are we going into extra time? I think your 26 goal prediction at the beginning. Is she getting it count? It counts. What a play at the end from Wallen to go up by one. Big smiles from Bowena, and what a quarter netball to start State of Origin. The Firebirds 15, the Swiss 14. Do not go anywhere. Put a time brought to you by Origin Energy and what a 15 minutes of netball that was to kick off round seven. Finished by one of the quickest goals from a restart you're ever likely to see from Danelle Wallam to help the Firebirds to a one goal advantage in an extremely scrappy, very high paced and very energetic opening to this State of Origin encounter. Centre pass to the Firebirds and we get it underway again. Quarter two. Dunkley through Buweta finds a way to circle edge. Now on the front space and a lovely weighted pass to Wallen who opens scoring again. Firebirds by two. Well, we spoke about Paige Hadley and Kim Valley. Oh, Ruby Bakewell, Doran! I swear the ball is a magnet to her hands. She is so outstanding. She has great anticipation. She watches the ball. She just comes up with some crucial intercepts and tips. She's sitting at 14.5. Missing net points. We see here on the Harvey Norman replay. Look at that. She's just got vision to the ball. Great angles. <laughs> we can't get a sentence out here because there is too much going on. Kim Ravalli, oh my gosh! <laughs> That's what happened. And that is why this game is so entertaining. Ruby Bakewell, Doran, second or third time she's done that already. Yeah, where was I? I was talking about Kim Ravalli and Paige Hadley, wasn't I, before that? No idea. <laughs> that was that head-to-head -head we spoke about pre-match. Oh, wow! Wow! What a play! 
Wall of Bonnie are back in. The rebound coming to Bawana and the turnover as well. The Firebirds are looking at a five-goal lead all of a sudden. Bawana to Wall of the crowd love it. She finishes it with no mistake. What a 90 seconds to add to the end of the first quarter. And this is why when the Firebirds are dangerous, they've got the ability to score fast and score quickly, particularly when their tails are up and they're confident. They play their most exciting brand of netball. And that lady on screen with ball in hand, Greta Boetta, becomes very dangerous. Wonderful one, two, Dunkley and Boetta. The little spin finishes at six goals to the good, five and over the quarter. And Fawns and Housby need to find a way through this defence. Push on the post. Oh, that sneaky little shooter to shooter, Housby to Fawns. They're so elusive, those two in the circle. The value. Good word up, content on Plow. She sits out in Wallum. Does the job again. 15 of 20 for Waller. So there's plenty of shots. Just a few though. 16 of 21 now. Here goes Housby. She's on the edge. But that doesn't worry her. And Housby hasn't missed one yet. Fawns 7 of 10. Oh, Gretel Buetta just lucky to get away with that one. Lara Dunkley in the right position. Had Gretel regathered that, it would have been called a replay. Yeah, good awareness, though, to not pick it up. Expect that at this level, obviously. And over the top goes the ball proud. She's the first to turn and regather. Well, Sharon Finn White was talking about that drive up the centre from Sophie Thorns. Opening up that space a little bit and really working that moving circle. You see a home alone there. Oh, great Step. So here we see a few errors creeping into the Swifts game. Oh, and then this time it's Hadley who pounces on a loose pass. Turner. Hadley. Pressure in defence. The weather right out there. Up goes Fawns and Asuro Brown. Well, this is such a fast-paced game. That first opening quarter, it was frenetic. Second quarter, oh, Lara Dunkley, great take there. It's shaping up to be the same. So, come third and fourth quarter, expect to see a few tied bodies. Great vision there from Rebellion to Wallop. Yeah, when a game with such a vocal home crowd is so frenetic early on, Sometimes the crowd can be the, the deciding factor getting a team home and giving them that little bit extra to make sure they deliver when there are tired legs out there. But it has been probably, from at least the games where I've been sitting on the sideline, the most frenetic early. And the scrappiness has been there, but it certainly hasn't detracted from the spectacle. Well, what it is, it's such a high-energy, exciting game to watch. but. So many little finicky errors coming into it. There's another one. Look at the ball. I, the ball might be slippery. I don't know. It just seems that there's so many loose hands out there that you don't normally see from caliber of players like we've got on court. Duffley just having a shot. She doesn't get to do that. <laughs> An accidental shot with the feed to Wallop. The Turner, she's in everything, isn't she? She's been good for the Swifts so far. Nice little switch back play from Proud back to Housby, drawing the defenders towards her. So here come the Swifts. An opportunity for Ruby Baker Doran. Oh, oh Helen Housby. Housby does not like that. And Ruby Baker Doran absolutely adores that call from the umpire. Well, the calls like that, like, they, they change the flow of a match. You know, the Swiss are on a little run here. If the Firebirds can honour this possession, which they likely will, you know, suddenly it puts a little dampener on it. Here is the Harvey Norman replay. Yeah, we have a look there. Ruby Dake, Bakewell Doran. Oh, 
we've missed out on it, but what she does so well is that body angle. She cuts the angle of the ball so nicely. So instead of running shoulder to shoulder with her player at the last minute, you can see there. Oh. <laughs> 50-50 that one, Will. What's How your... What a, what a political answer from you. Um, no, I'm not paid to have that opinion. That's your opinion, thank you. Try and throw me under the bus there, champ. Do you want to watch? Hold time. Well, here we go. Bodies on the floor. The girl with the cloth today will be, no doubt, or the mop, I should say, will have a work cut out for her because this is what we're going to see. Tied bodies, collisions. Sharon Finn and White, what are, you, what are you seeing in the Firebirds attack? They had a nice little run there. Yeah, they did well, but what I'm liking about their attack and, and, and something they haven't been doing a lot of in previous games is that fake as they're getting closer to the circle to draw the defender into a different position and then looking straight in. Wallum seems to be getting that ball a lot easier now. What they need to be careful of is that they don't do too many cross-court balls because the Swifts are ready in waiting to snap them up. Speaking of snapping up, Sarah Clow just did one of the most impressive pieces of defensive work. It was a fake pass, so Gretel Boetta, you spoke before about that little step on and flick off, so looking one direction, delivering the other, a fake, so to speak. Sarah Clow just watching Gretel Boetta coming up with a win, and speaking of coming up with a win, it's exactly what happens down this end for the Firebirds. I hate to see the goals off turnover stat because both teams have been squandering opportunities. There it is, 7-2, but the turnover count is much higher. So think that, yeah, there you go, 14 of 17 and 17 turnovers, Swiss, two goals. It's a lot, it, that is a lot for not even a half of netball, particularly from the Swifts. Helen Housby is second on the ladder behind her English teammate, Joe Harton, when it comes to general play turnovers. She obviously handles the ball a lot, but for the Firebirds to put pressure on her, they know that errors potentially will come through the hand of the Housby. Tried to pass it on quickly. The Nissan Arena crowd like it. Very big crowd here for this one, as you would expect. Another turnover doesn't result in a goal. And this time, can the Swifts break through the defence? Six goals, the Firebirds to the good now. 11-6 in this quarter. It was 15-14 at quarter time. Absolutely nothing in it between these two at that point. Now we arrive in a situation where potentially as Fawns leaves it short from close range, where potentially the Swifts are going to be forced into some super shots in a minute's time. Again, they can't honour that though, and they can really put the foot on the throat, the Firebirds. Absolutely. Sarah Cloud just getting Wallum's measure here at the moment. Her positioning is great. She's come up with the last two little wins just through her positioning on the body of Wallum. Channel, Fawns coming out, nice little play. Housby on the baseline. And an HCF timeout with 5.51 on the clock. The Firebirds call this one. They need to make sure that they carry this advantage or better into this break because I guess it's the only little run we've seen between two very, very evenly matched teams. I just can't believe how scrappy this game is. There is just so many loose balls. So those one percenters um, I just wanted to skip to, to Megan Anderson. Out, what she has to say. For some reason they make the change and they switch their defense in just so that we're aware. So if they make that change, just make sure we still do keep the body in the circle and they're holding up the path and then finding the space is working well. Yeah. If it's that one along the base, I reckon swing it top and yeah. try and come in that way. Yeah. Um, but they, it might end up being Maddie Sander out there. Yes, but that's just change of direction and going to the body and coming off. Yeah. Yep. But she'll hang in the base and she'll work yeah. with them. Yep. Um, and if it's cloud, just go strong. Step across and go in front of her. Yep. If, if they make that change, right? Yep. Very easy. Last few minutes. Yep. Come on. I'm not going to Let's go. Let's go. Heartbeat on three. One, two, three. Heartbeat! 
five goals to the good, the Queensland Firebirds at home here at Nissan Arena. We see a change for the New South Wales Swifts. Maddie Proud into the centre position and Paige Hadley into wing attack. So just a little shuffle there in the midcourt. Interesting. That's an interesting change given the, the power of work that Proud got through last week. Yeah, it is. What brings that about? Absolutely. It is. Well, Let's question. find out. <laughs> Why don't we find out from Sharon Finn and White? Yeah, just listening to both coaches, actually, Brian Yakel and Beck Woolley talking to the defenders. She wants the defenders to maybe work on a bit of a switch. And if they are going up for the high ball to come off the body to allow that space to get up. She was talking again to Sophie Fawns about strong drives. She wants house beyond the hold and her mid courts. Uh, she wants them double playing until they hit the circle. Well, that middle channel from Fawn, she's exploiting it. But as you just saw there in that play, Gabby Simpson is aware of it. She stepped across that top of the circle just to shut that drive of Fawns down. Power five time as Buetta and Clow scrap for the ball. Sarah Clow, she's on 30 missing net points, three intercepts, only four penalties, so she's making her presence felt in this game, that's for sure. Doesn't seem like a lot, Bertie, but in the context of this game, when the Firebirds are on 117 total, because of all the turnovers, minus in points for people. As we look at it there, there's their match leaders. Uh, Bakewell Doran and Housby, the only ones who... Well, Bakewell Doran's the only one who's cracked 40 at this point. Bakewell Doran has been on absolute fire. She just seems to be getting better and better every week in that goal defence position. Absolutely loving what she's putting out on court. In the context of a game like this, at what stage do the Swifts start looking for deliberate super shots? Five goals down, it could get a lot worse if they start shooting super shots at the percentages that they were shooting last week. Yeah, it was dangerous, wasn't it, from them? And it, that's exactly what they don't want to put that pressure on themselves is let's leave it to the super shots to try to get ourselves back in the game. As you mentioned, their accuracy on it last week wasn't great. And they miss a shot, Firebirds defenders are onto the rebounds and all of a sudden they find themselves in a worse position, so... They're probably a bit shy of the super shot too because of what Riley Bachelor did to them in the third quarter last week where she sunk four on the trot. Just like to forget that that was even a rule, I think, the Swiss at the moment. Absolutely. Six goals it remains though. How are the Swiss going to find a way back? Three minutes on the clock in the first half. Get finding a way back. It's tough to find a way to circle edge at this point. And, and that's what the Firebirds defence are doing so well. They're taking that circle edge feed away from Maddie Proud, from Paige Hadley, and making it difficult. That space, that depth that Fawns and Housby had in that opening first quarter is no longer there. And they're forcing them to throw the ball around, which is making so many more opportunity for the Firebird defenders to get hands intercepts, tips and touches. Oh, Turner, so close. Again, the jump and the feed. But when a jump with such confidence, she knows she's going to find somewhere to throw it before she lands again. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, Ebony Azuro-Brown is moving so much with Fawn. She's completely had to change her game. Who's going to come up with that? Is it going to be Fawns? It's going to be the Firebirds. Well, an offside call on Maddie Fawns. Proud. Firebirds quick in transition. That big square puts Boetta under the ring. And now it is seven. 1.30 to go. And the centre pass for the home team, and they fire it back into Waller, who's forced to go and go backwards, and she does! What a feed from Lara Dunkley, and what a shot. Danelle Wallen, so exciting to watch. Up and about the brand newly minted diamond. Wow, I wouldn't like to be cutting the highlights from this game, because there are so many. 
Weta. Serve the ledge. Wallen wants better position. And she, and she does again. Well, it seems... Janelle, you're on fire. Just hit the super shot now. Completed the trifecta. Uh, that rocket from Megan Anderson during the week, clearly. Some good feedback for the Fibers, responding well to it. Takes the step, and it is eight goals. Suncorp Super Netball, and the Sun... I'm sorry, this Army Norman replay. And uh, stepping out of court, the Suncorp Super Netball. I'm overexcited. Well, it is exciting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It really is, even though it's now an eight-goal game. Fawns pulls one back. And they'll rush to the centre pass to see if they can restore an eight-goal advantage. The biggest one on Wallen. Match. Wallen high. And it's back at eight. And that is the way it is going to end. A hug between the new Diamonds team paints up the attack end. And the Firebirds, 35. Lead the Swifts 27 in an... <laughs> well, it's rushed past again. There was so much to like, and there was more to like from the team in purple. The Firebirds, eight goals to the good, but it has been such a battle, and we are very privileged to be able to talk to Bryony Akel, coach of the Swifts, who's sitting there glaring at me from the other side of the court. <laughs> Bryony, what was the message at halftime? Because that scoreboard does not reflect how tight this tussle has been. Oh, my message was actually to be better, to be honest. I'm a bit disappointed with some of the effort that we're putting out there. So doing the basics a lot better and um, finishing off quarters. Bryony, we're sitting here just going, is it a ping pong match? There just seems to be so many loose balls, 19 turnovers from the Swifts. Firebird's not too far behind. What's behind that? It is just crazy. It's not how we train people. I'm just letting you let know that now. Um, yeah, a bit disappointing, but um, hopefully it won't be like that in the second half. Just talk us through that switch of Hadley and Proud in the midcourt. What are you hoping to achieve there? Oh, I just thought I thought Gabby and was doing a great job sort of pigeonholing us on that centre pass. So just trying to open that up a bit more. All right, well, look, look, we'll let you go because there's highlights about once every 33 seconds here, so we need to get back to the game. Thank you so much. Let's hope you're smiling like that at the end of this one. Me too. Thanks, guys. A goal apiece to start the second half, and there is the midcourt as it stands. Hadley staying uh, in wing attack after the switch halfway through the second quarter, and... How good is it when you can hear directly from the coach why? Oh, absolutely. The access is amazing. And there's been a big switch that we've missed. Wing defence, Maddie Turner has gone to wing defence. Clow out to goal defence. Tegan O'Shaughnessy has yeah, come on wow. into the goalkeeper position. So we know that this defensive end of the, the Swifts has versatility. We saw Clow have a little bit of a run out there at goal defence. I think that matchup of her on uh, Gretel Boetta is going to be a good one, as we can see there already. Oh, and they've come up with the win. Nice little start for O'Shaughnessy. Sharon Finn and White. No, Dunk, no. She won't come up with it. Close, though. Lara Dunkley. What do you see in that in that change? O'Shaughnessy is only her third appearance of the season. Well, well excited to see her out on court because I saw what she could do at the Team Girls Cup and I watched her as soon as she came out on court she didn't body up on Janelle she actually stood off her and that is what shooters don't want they want to find the body so she's actually going to probably play a bit of a cat and mouse game I'd say with Wallen all right let's see how it plays out O'Shaughnessy how many game time last week so she's been on ice for a little while and she's bouncing around down the defensive end like someone who has been aching to get off the bench. So let's see what happens there. Bakewell Doran. Simpson as they switch channels with ease down to Buweta. In the front space is Wallam who the mark of her, I guess, confidence at this point and nearly takes the step forward. The Wallam's 29 from 35 at 83%. So we know that she's capable of huge volume. Maybe the change of O'Shaughnessy from Cloud just gives us something else to think about, different positioning. We say 35 shots. She only had 41 shots last week. So she's getting plenty of ball. And another turnover comes. Ruby Bakewell Doran, a clean, beautiful intercept on the fly. She is on absolute fire here today at this arena. 
it stays like this and the Firebirds keep playing the way they do, the Swiss will have a nervous wait to see whether they end this half of the season on the bottom of the ladder as reigning premiers. As Wallen misses another one. She's left a few short from there, but she always seems to pick up her own rebounds. Biggest lead of this match, nine goals now. We can see there the Firebirds, nine rebounds, the Swifts only three. It was an area of Firebirds game last week that they needed to improve on. So their defensive coach, Claire Ferguson, will be happy with what she's seeing from the Firebirds defenders today. And even in attack, I mean, you've got Wallam and Gretel Boetta following in their shots. Anything that's missed, they're regathering. Fawns not confident to take the shot, so the pressure that Ebony Azuro Brown and Ruby Bakewell Doran are putting over the shot is just building. How's me though? Still blemish free as we stay at nine goals. Simpson. Boweta, and as soon as Boweta gets her hands on the ball, up goes the hand of the Mill Wallop. Incredible connection, great little fake there, Lara Dunkley. Oh, but Wallham, toenails over the baseline, or what was that, a contact's call, she stands out of play. Well, if the Swifts are going to have any chance of coming back into this one, they get little sniffs like that, they have to make them count. Proud, you can see on her back still, fawns out. Oh, the pressure of knowing that they need to convert is causing them to hold back a pass, get stuck a little bit on the way to edge. Well, the Fibers defenders are just riding the Swiss attackers like backpacks. They're just that hard one-on-one -on -one pressure you can see there. There is no easy pass for the Swifts at present. And then you see that this happens. Oh, that hurts. That hurts the Swiss. And it helps this crowd. Well, it's the work that the Swifts are having to do to get to post. They're fatigued by the time they've got to put up the shot. Doesn't seem to be the case at this end as they go. Now 10 to the good, the Firebirds. 5-3 the quarter. Eight turns into 10. And the Swifts need to find something. They got dusted in the third badly. That was the difference against the Lightning. Where games are made this quarter, all lost, and we look like Taylor Fraser's going to come on at wing attack. What's funny is that we spoke early at the beginning of the season about the Melbourne Vixens. They were wooden spooners last year. The year before that, they were premiers. Swifts premiers last year, all of a sudden, talking about that bottom half of the ladder. It's we put the markers on the Swifts now. We're halfway through, that's it. It's, 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 that's just, I Where guess that just shows it? you how tight it is. And it's just yes. a little bit off, 5% yes. off. And it's never happened before in Suncorp Super Netball history, a team that has been premiers to Wooden Spooners. And I know I'm getting a little far ahead of ourselves. But, you know, it's a possibility. If the, if the Swifts don't start turning their season around, all of a sudden the rest of these, or the next seven rounds, become very difficult for them. There's no easy games as we head down now to the sideline and Sharon Finn and White. Look, I was just looking at how quickly the Firebirds are bringing the ball down the court and I'm surprised that we haven't seen the Swifts throw on the box defence. We've seen how effective that has been for them in previous matches. So, um, you know, I'd like to see maybe if they could do that to, to slow that ball coming down. Absolutely. The box defence is obviously... Just a really great defensive structure that they can throw in there to mix things up. We talk about the one-on-one -on -one defense, but the box defense is just playing or defending the space a little more than the body. So for those, I guess, new to, to Super Netball, and we hope there's plenty of you out there, box defense a little like a zone defense in basketball. Absolutely, where you, you start defending the space rather than the person. As a result, your defensive unit has to communicate and work yeah. well with one another. And I think that's what 
what the Swifts need at present is that communication. It's very quiet down here. They've got a new player in Tegan O'Shaughnessy out on court, so they need to bring her into the game. They need to talk to her and make her feel as though she's part of a, a unit, which is exactly what they are. Tegan, this is your patch. Unfortunately, Danelle Wallop's in that patch. <laughs> so ha have fun with that. I feel like Dan Danelle Wallop's in every single <laughs> patch in that goal circle. <laughs> Ten goals still, halfway through the third quarter. And that's nice better, feed to yeah, house me. a beautiful little feed from Fawns out of the circle, just turned and delivered into Housby under the post. It's important for them to, at, at this stage of the game, retain that confidence. And we'll see how well the Firebirds' defence does at shutting them down if they're not willing to throw those passes. And Wallum, she's been leaving a few short. She just wants, she wants to get a rebound stats up. I get it, I get it. Well, she's taking over from Ramelda Aiken, who's been yep. the leader in that department of the league for the last few years. So she's got big shoes to fill. Well, Bakewell Doran and Housby, who have been glued to each other the entire time, have also picked up the lion's share of the Nissan net points. Well, Gabby Simpson's proving to be a bit of a challenge for the Swifts today. She's wow! Like... <laughs> Winner! Flying through! Just slicing through the forward third. And I think we need a timeout to just get our heads around that. Just to take Big a smile. Impressive work. Taylor Fraser, wing attack position. Gabby Simpson has been through three wing attacks today. She started on Hadley. Well, she started on Proud, I should say. Then she went to Hadley. Now she's got Fraser. She's doing her job very well. shot let's take them if we feel comfortable yeah. but they're doubling back on our shooter every time so we don't want our goal attack going sucking behind the goal shooter and not wanting the ball right so if they go back onto helen that's free range for you to be able to do your magic work the ball to the post yeah. all right and in that time while she's working to the post you can be working to get into the two yeah. that makes sense yeah. let's yeah. keep working hard we've got to keep the work rate higher out when we're trying to get that ball do the work early cut through from Boetta to finish it off and now she almost too fast for herself ended up with a falcon almost <laughs> good hands though and Bryony Akel pulling the trigger on the super shots injecting the pace of Taylor Fraser to try and free up that attack again yep. to get to that white zone and of course if you're new to super netball in the last five minutes of every quarter we call it the power five and you can shoot from the white semi-circle and pick up a two-point goal. Well, Kelly Singleton's on the court in the goal attack position. We know that she's a bit of a super shot specialist. I say that too many times in a row. It's a tricky one. You really took a deep breath before you said it. Especially if you throw Suncorp in front of that as well. Yep, yeah, yeah, you're a professional though. <laughs> now, we heard Bryony Aikle with some very strong messages for her team. What about Megan Anderson, Sharon Finn and White? What did you hear in the Firebirds huddle? Well, well the first thing Megan said to her players, what the, she said the work rate is unbelievable and I would have to agree with her. I, would, I have never seen the Firebirds, all seven players on court, apply the work rate that they're currently doing right now. Um, wow! <laughs> well, they keep doing exactly what you say they're doing. It's like you're some kind of expert, Sharon. No, she, she also talked about, um, Claire Ferguson talked to her uh, defenders about setting up a box defence off the first phase. So off the first centre pass, she wants that box defence set up. OK. Well, the view, the curveball comes, but not from the Swifts. It comes from the Firebirds, who are now 13 to the good with a centre pass. 
So I just want to... Gabby Simpson is sitting on negative one Nissan net points, but is having an absolutely outstanding game. We just mentioned she's through three wing attacks, and that just goes to show the position of wing defence and how vital it is on court. You've got someone like Ruby Bakewell Doran sitting behind her that's got all the glory to her name in intercepts and deflections. And she would, Ruby Bakewell Doran would be the first to say the reason why she's embellished with that is because of the hard one on one defensive work that Gabby Simpson's doing. The first super shot and it dribbles in. Sorry. Carry on. <laughs> I just get excited about the I know, it was quite like the soliloquy, and I thought, oh, I'd better jump in here. <laughs> so, long story short, Will, <laughs> Gabby Simpson, outstanding, and a large reason as to why Ruby Bakewell Doran is outstanding today. Yeah, the unsung heroes of netball, always here if you need the wing defence. And the intangibles are where it's won and lost, and what Gabby Simpson has delivered us from the same position. Helen Housby goes for super shot number two and drains it again. And they're back to 11. Well, Bryony Akel said to the Swifts, when it comes to super shot, we need to take it if you feel comfortable, which I find is a really interesting direction from the coach. Take it only if you feel comfortable. That's because if they don't land, she can say, you obviously didn't feel comfortable, why don't you take it? <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, it's 100 bucks from Suncorp uh, going to the Confident Girls Foundation for every super shot, so we've got 200 bucks already in this quarter and let's hope we see a few more as Bakewell Dora tries to chase her tip out but it goes out of court and that money from the Confident Girls Foundation continues their work to keep girls in the game which is what we want. We want more juniors out there playing Suncorp Super Netball and fighting for these positions and being role models as Halsby goes for number three and this time it's no good. Oh bad luck Helen Halsby but Ruby Bakewell Doran just did a great job of getting that front position. So all of a sudden, eight goals in it, which is not a lot. It, it would be if it wasn't 12. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at the... Uh... <laughs> no excuses, that says 12 as well, mate. <laughs> That's just never my strong point. <laughs> Taking a moment here in commentary, coming good again, 13 goals. I love that you've hung me out to dry there. there was Hang yourself out to dry, mate. <laughs> an opportunity to let it go, didn't take it. Is it hot in here? All of a sudden. <laughs> Rebellion circle edge. And it was just too easy. Poeta slicing through, stationary defence. And we're back to 14, so that's good work from Housby. Knocking down two or three super shots. And undone and they're back to 14. Oh. Big clash, Suro Brown and Houseby. Yes. The two Brits. Back in the white stripe, Houseby again and nails it again, three from four. Well, she's got no, no choice but to, does she? Which puts them in a difficult position. Firebirds defenders probably want to have a look at just taking that super shot position away from the Swifts, Swifts attackers, I should say. As long as they keep doing the job down here and potentially add a super shot of their own with 12 seconds left on the clock in the third quarter, this could sink the Swifts. Obstruction by defence, you've taken that one. This is over here, yes. Obstruction and it rounds out. It's over here. Yes. It's going to be 13 goals if Wallen can put it in, and she does, and the Nissan Arena crowd likes it. It is 13 goals. The Queensland Firebirds in control here at home in round seven. We'll take a break. So work it in there, work it in and out, then we have to take the shot, all right? And get some urgency. If it's our ball, let's run it like you just did in that last one. I think it's well done. It's like in the first half, we were rattling them from transition. I think now the it's so, like we get so upset if we miss something. We just need to go straight back onto D because that's where we can get the ball. Maddie Proud there with some strong words and they were rattling them in transition and she, she said disappointed when they need to score they put their heads down and then the Firebirds flow down court and after three quarter time thanks to Origin Energy they need to come back and reset Absolutely, quickly. Absolutely they do and that's exactly what you want your captain to say get your heads up we've still got a quarter of netball 
We're still in this. We need to get on every pass. And Bryony Akel said the same thing. Get the energy up and about. Start believing that we're still in this game because at the moment, it doesn't look like you're invested or you think you've got the capability to peg it back. And that's exactly how the Swifts need to approach this last quarter. They need to draw on some of that fibers defensive energy that has given them a 13 goal lead. And Sharon, you were down there listening in. Yeah, and Megan Anderson was very happy with the work rate. She wants them to continue that high work rate. She praised Gabby Simpson for the great attacking that she's doing through the middle. She wants them to stick on that one-on-one -on -one defence. And similar to what Brian Yackel said, she wants her mid-courts to go wide to create that space up the middle. And that's what's worked so well today for the Queensland Firebirds is that hard, relentless one-on-one -on -one defence. You can see there it's just putting pressure. Except for, she, uh, except for her. For what, sorry? Except for she, I was going to say. Except for her. Well, that's what the Swifts need. They need the energy. They all, they should be running, as you can see there. Look at this play from Taylor Fraser, putting her body on the line. Helen House be backing her up. They should have been there around Taylor Fraser, giving her a tap, saying that's what we need more of. Former training partner, she, she brings speed to that circle edge position and she not give up. And she brings energy. She brings so much energy. She's like a little bunny out there just going for absolutely everything. And that's what the Swifts need in this last quarter. Well, Bryony Akel has been deploying her in every game so far. As Singleton comes up with one, she's out on court. Her goal attack, so Fawns is having a rest. Beautiful play there from the New South Wales Swifts. Kelly Singleton just finished off a lovely little piece of defensive work from herself. So she started the game, opening quarter last week, and she comes on to the final quarter this week. 11 goals, was 14. 3-1 quarter so far. And Housby in the shooter role, which we've said before, and there's Fawns and Hadley are both sitting out at the moment. O'Shaughnessy remains on. Well, the Swifts just on a little mini run here. 3-1, they lead this last quarter. And it's what Maddie Proud said to her team. Oh, oh my gosh, she was so close to that. So, so close to that ball into Wallam. 11 goals, 12 minutes, Fraser. How about Clow and Goweta just going head to head? Oh. Maddie Proud turned herself inside out to deliver that ball or to gather the ball and then deliver. So Swift again just starting this last quarter off beautifully. Maple Doran saw that from five metres away, just couldn't quite time it correctly to take the intercept. Sarah Cloud, she's just been whistled a little bit with penalties. She's sitting on eight for the game so far. She's just such a skillful player. They need her in play, not standing out of play. She's so capable of just that beautiful positioning and getting hand to ball. Single of the goal number three. She had four from four. Last week, she ended up on... Oh, it was out. It was Gabby Simpson. Well, look at Maddie Proud. She turns to her girls and says, get up and about, ladies. This is it. And this is where they can start applying that scoreboard pressure back onto the Firebirds. Certainly more urgency in the Swifts. Now, where this was in the third quarter, they were swamped by the Firebirds. Work rate that we talked about. Fraser finds Singleton in the pocket. Well, I like Certainly more movement and a nice run for the forward line from Singleton. Yeah, I like what Singleton has brought onto the court. We spoke early on about what Thorns brings in that depth and a little bit more space, but Singleton doing a beautiful job in this game so far. ATF timeout, and the Swifts are as close as they've been in a quarter and a half. And we're going to listen in on the Firebirds in just a second, see what they're going to do to respond. The only one we lost is that no one was moving. Yeah, um, yeah I think your timing, if, if Gretz come over and you've got the inside, just hold and then move. Like, don't worry about a dodge or anything. Just stay on the body and then come. Good job. Keep that way straight up. It's nice in there. Yeah, it's really good. I think you're switching on to the opposite defender when they switch. Just keep that arm up when, when you want it.
11 minutes to, I guess, decide, or at least in a turning point or a chapter for the Swift season. Can they start to drag this back or continue to, after a 7-3 start to the quarter? A little giggle there between Boweta and Plow. Obviously my, teammates at a national level. As one of my favourite parts of the game is that in back play they're having a little laugh and a giggle and then the next centre pass they will just be going hammer and tong at the ball. <laughs> yeah. I'll, have a, I'll have a laugh with you but then in a second I'll give you a black eye. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love it. All right, Charrington and White was in the in the Swiss huddle, and obviously a little bit of momentum, a little bit of momentum swing. There sure is, Will, and Bryony Aikul specifically addressed her shooters, just asking them to just keep presenting, keep being an option. But you wonder if the changes with uh, fresh legs coming on in the Swifts is going to be uh, the downfall of the Firebirds. We haven't seen a change in uh, players from the Firebirds. You know, it's the last 10 minutes and, uh, you know, the fresh legs may, may be the difference. Sharon Finn and White, I've just got a question for you. I'm sitting close to Will McCloy and when Swifts just came up with that ball, he did a double fist pump. I like close netball games. What did Will do? A double fist pump. A double he's fist pump. Clearly barracking for the Swiss here and making no attempt to I hide like the fact. Close games. He threw me under the bus before. I'll do the same. Well, he is wearing blue, Laura. I remember that. I also had a purple shirt, unlike Laura, and chose this one. But we'll get excited because the Swiss, well and truly, coming back in this last quarter. But well, the entire Queensland. Bench of coaches up on the feet though, they want to see a response. And they want to see them shut this down. A nine four quarter you can see there after back to back 20 goal quarters from the Firebirds took it away. Oh, Sarah Clark came up with a wonderfully timed intercept. I thought there for a second Tegan O'Shaughnessy was going to get called for a hell ball. Here come the Swifts though. It was 14 goals and if they can on of this possession, which one they will have halved that deficit in under half of the time remaining, but it's Singleton who can't make a drop. Simpson looks for options. And a tip on, and it's Housby. Oh, Housby has such a great defensive game. She always manages to come up with those little wins when they matter. She's what? sucking in the big ones. If you want a goal attack, you can take an <laughs> intercept. That's a nice little bonus. And now it was 14, it's 7. 8.28 on the clock. And, you know, good point that Sharon made in terms of there haven't been changes. Uh, now we can't make a drop. It hasn't been changes from the Firebirds. And is there some fatigue there with the the frenetic pace of the first half of this game. Well, I actually think there's some fatigue in this shooting circle, particularly Helen Housley, because she is working so hard in defence. She's getting to the shot and she's tied. She's doubled over now. You can see in back play, taking in some really <laughs> solid breaths. Her work rate has been huge in this match today. Wallam High takes the step in and brings up gold number 60, and that is her 56th shot. Keep in mind, she had 41 shots up against Jeeva Mentor last week and straight down the middle channel via Gretel Boweta. Well, the speed from Gabby Simpson on that centre pass, direct to Gretel Boweta and then straight into Wallam. The old one two, we're back at nine goals. Housby mid-range, this time no mistake. So who blinks first now? It's a 10-4 quarter to the Swift. They're really responding to the call from Bryony Akel. But every goal. Oh! Oh, wow. and Cloud just having a little bump into one another. Oh, oh. Low percentage. Drawing flying. Well, well done, Maddie Proud. She's been put on the oh, This time she comes up with it. Ruby Bakewell Doran is having a game. She has 
been absolutely outstanding today. 61.5 missing net points, but four intercepts, five deflections, and only six penalties. Incredible work. We're back at 10 goals. What a piece of athleticism just laid on there from Gretel Boweta. Sometimes we see things from her and we don't mention them because she does it so often, but any other player, you'd be, you'd be all over it. Gosh, she's an absolute freak, isn't she? Her athleticism is just next so guys, level. guys, let's simplify this, yeah? First phase, make it very, very clear. We need second phase deep really quickly. So you pass off, take her deep, and then do the front cut. Does that mean you're waiting too long to take her on that front cut? Then we hit top of the circle. Then we take a breath. We must work that ball to the post, yeah? Helen, keep presenting up and back. Don't end up, do the work first, take a top and then drop into the space and then it's easily read by these guys. All right, indeed, there is no room on their center pass. Jump the line, keep them up high. Look up, look for some of these balls to turn over. All right? Two point time, we go for them, yeah? There's some of our next generation that Suncorp is hoping to bring through through the Confident Girls Foundation. We'll be out there on court one day and participating in these incredible state of origin clashes that we've been privy to on the sidelines over the past 25 years. The last time, of course, was an extra time loss for the Firebirds here at home around one year ago. May 2nd, in fact, so pretty much to the day, 69-66. Ah, oh, Lara Dunkley, what a beautiful little fake. Tegan O'Shaughnessy thought it was going into the pocket and opened that wall under the post. Sharon, was it just keep doing what you're doing from Megan Anderson? Well, actually, um, it was uh, the assistant coaches that were doing a bit of the talking down there. Katie Walker was talking to Lara Dunkley and asking her to keep her vision wide because the Swifts are going to come flying at every ball. Uh, Claire Ferguson wanted her defenders to stick one-on-one, -on -one, hands over everything, front position and block out on the rebounds, which is, I guess, the suite of skills that all of our defenders should have. Thank you, Sharon. Oh! <laughs> Lara Dunkley. A tricky one there for, from her, just fumbled. Contact wing. Up here, wing attack. Tired bodies clashing into each other as we head towards the power five and a turnover. Again, matched with another turnover. Firebirds lose possession and regain it with five minutes on the clock and ten goals in their pocket. Well, the Firebirds find themselves in a different position to last week. They've got the luxury of not having to take the super shot and just to keep flicking away at those one-pointers. Swifts, on the other hand. It'll be super shot time, very much so, with 4.40 as we head through Fraser, down court. Now's me to take one now. Third time lucky for Housby. Another Suncorp super shot. And the deficit now nine. They need to be paired with turnovers. And the Firebirds do not look in the mood to give them up. That hold from Wallen is so strong. And it's, she holds, 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 holds for the perfect time. And then just moves off it when the ball has been released. Out hunting and Housby. No good. Ball beats everyone. And this is exactly what can happen when you're forced into super shot territory. The weather. Simpson on the transverse line. No need to hurry for the Firebirds. Every ace up the sleeve. The weather top of circle looks for options and they're just soaking up the time. 
And eventually they find space on the baseline and it is well, their talisman. Yeah. It's a different looking Fibers outfit this week, isn't it? To the one we saw last week against the Collingwood Magpies. Their energy, their work ethic, their drives, their defensive one-on-one -on -one pressure. They look like a completely different team. It was 10-4 at one stage in this quarter, and now, well, the Firebirds have gone on a run, quarter of the past five, and... Oh, you count that up. Actually, you don't count that up. <laughs> Best not. Eight of the past nine. Bakewell Doran. The captain waits, releases. Plow doesn't quite get a hand to it, and opens the space up behind her. And the Firebirds are on their way. Sun Club Super Netball 2022, absolute tipster's nightmare. Absolutely, isn't it? You just do not know. Which team is going to show up, right? Exactly. Exactly right. It's now a 14-13 corner, and Maddie Proud can see this one slipping away. And the Magpies will be sniffing away off the bottom of the Super Netball ladder in the Melbourne Derby tomorrow, 4 p.m., live and free on KO Freebies and Fox Sports. Beautiful one to Buena off of Wallen. And we are at 15. Well, the Queensland Firebirds potentially looking at taking every single, or winning every single quarter, I should say, today. They've been searching for that consistent performance in recent weeks. <laughs> Today just might be exactly that as Danelle Wall. They Wallen. want Danelle to win that super shot and the roof lifts off Miss in Arena. Oh, they love it here in Brisbane. And I think that's seven goals on the trot now for the Firebirds. And Houseby tries to put a stop to that and does. 46 seconds left on the clock. Oh, Tegan O'Shaughnessy, great work from her. Just leaving Wallam under the post and coming out. Unfortunately, just a little too late for the New South Wales Swifts. She's in now with her attempt at the super shot. And another $100 to the Confident Girls Foundation, but it's not going to change the outcome of this match. 20 seconds on the clock. Well, Ebony Azuro Brown is just monstering over the Swifts attackers. Ebony, Ebony. A really important win for the Queensland Firebirds to stay in contention, potentially even be in the top two at the end of this round. Super shot. Oh. We're going to have the consolation after the buzzer. And Housie picks up goal number 28. No, she doesn't. <laughs> and that just really tells the story, doesn't it? Well, for the New South Wales Swifts, it does. Confusion. An absolutely well rounded performance from the Queensland Firebirds. That last quarter, 18 all comprehensive win which will keep the Firebirds in the top four.